This video will show how to combine markers and phenotypic data in order to identify genomic regions that are involved and affect these traits. This process is commonly referred to as QTL analysis. From the analysis page, I go to Studies Filter to select the studies I want to analyze. In this example, I'll use data measured on a tomato integration lines population that is derived from the cultivated variety M82 and the wild species Pinelli. When I open the folder, there are two subfolders, which are marker scores and phenotypes. As can be expected, the marker scores folder holds genotype studies where markers were scored on this population, while the phenotypes folder stores traits data. To perform a QTL analysis, I need to select a genotype study and a phenotype study. In the marker scores folder, I select the only study that is in there. From the phenotypes folder, I'll pick this study. Now I'll select the IELTS map analysis. Then I'll put the trait that I want to map into the Y field. Let's take total yield. Next, I go to the Maps tab. This tab presents genetic maps that are available for this population. I'll select this map and put it in the field. Then I can set the alpha level of the statistical comparison or leave it as it is and then click OK. The resulting figure shows an integration lines map where a vertical yellow line represents each of the 12 tomato linkage groups. The segments to its left indicate the location of the integration lines that came from the donor parent. Each pair of parallel lines represents the homozygous and heterozygous states of the integration. The left is homozygous and the right is heterozygous, as can be seen in the legend. These segments are color-coded. Red means that this integration significantly increases the trait compared to the control. Green represents a decrease of the trait. And black means that there is no significant difference. In other words, a colored segment may indicate that this genomic region contains a gene or DNA sequence that affects the trait. If I click on a segment, the statistical comparisons of this integration to the control, which is M82, is displayed in a new tab. Each data point represents a replicate for each genotype. On the bottom there is the analysis of variance table and the p-value. Going back to the figure, I can click on the integration name to put the homozygous heterozygous, and the control on the same figure. Finally, I can click on a chromosome to see all lines that correspond to it. As another option, I can set a more stringent p-value while performing the analysis. Let's make it this one. Now we have more black segments instead of the colored ones, which indicates less significant differences. In the Form tab, I can select more phenotypic studies to be included in the analysis. Here I select another study where the trait total yield was measured. The resulting figure is based on the unified data from the selected studies. When I click on a line, I can see all replicates from these studies. If I set the studies mean checkbox, clicking a line will display genotypes performance across studies.
Another mapping population that was extensively measured is the Neoriki backcross inbred lines. This population is derived from the variety TA209 and the wild species Neoriki. To analyze it, I'll go to the Neoriki folder, select phenotypes and markers, and then enter one of the folders. Let's pick ACO 2008. Here we have both phenotype studies, where traits were measured on the population, as well as genotype studies, where markers were scored on it. For performing a QTL analysis, I have to select at least one genotype study and one phenotype study. Let's select these ones. Now I choose the integration plot analysis. Then I put a trait in the Y field and a genetic map in the other field. And this is the resulting figure. It shows all genotypes as vertical lines where blue segments represent the Neoriki genomic integrations in the otherwise red TA209 background. Horizontal lines represent the chromosomes. On the left there are marker names. Line names appear below and they are colored according to the traits value such that green is low, black is average, and red is high. When I point on an integration I can see the chromosome name, start and stop positions, flanking parameters, and the integration identity. Unlike the previous example of the integration lines, each line in the backcross population may contain more than a single integration. I can also cut the results to have only genotypes with, let's say, no more than two integrations so perhaps they can be more useful for breeding. And now we have only lines with no more than two integrations. As another option, I can select the marker's trait ANOVA and again put one or more traits in the Y field. Let's put these ones and then the map in the next field. Each panel represents one of the linkage groups. A solid line indicates the mean of all genotypes with the M82 marker in that position, while the dotted line is the mean of all genotypes with the Neoriki marker in that position. Vertical dots are the standard error. I can check the marker diamonds checkbox and click on any region in the figure. A statistical comparison is displayed in a new tab between each of the genotypes groups. The analysis of variance table and the p-value can be displayed. The association p-values plot is similar to the previous analysis, only that it displays p-values instead of means along the chromosome. Here the y-axis is the minus log of the p-value. Clicking on a panel will display the chromosome plot on a separate figure. Here each data point represents the p-value of the corresponding marker and trait, as can be seen in the tooltip and the figure legend. Clicking on a point will display the actual comparison between the genotypes groups for this marker. 
And the analysis of variance table can be viewed.